Zone valve or zone valves, S plans. How does a zone valve work? My name's Alan Hart and Happy New Year to everyone. Happy 2020. Um, I've been getting asked loads and loads of questions about zone valves and about S plans and how to wire and how they work. So I thought I'd do a video on zone valves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this zone valve down, show you how it works. We'll do a bit on the wiring of the zone valve so that you can understand the zone valve. I'm also going to look at an S plan. So I'll show you how an S plan works. So that's with two zone valves. And then what we'll do, we'll talk about multi or multiple zones as well. So yeah, let's have a look now. Starting with the basic, this is a motorized valve. And what we've got, I've just got a screw here. Just remove this screw. At the top. And then this is normally closed. And what that means is it's spring loaded on here. And to manually override this, it's got a manual there. And you can click and you can hold that open and that will actually open the valve inside you can't see that but it opens the valve inside and what we've got we've got a motor here and when we put power so this is a uh, synchron motor when we put power to this motor it will it moves the cog in there which is a little bit hard to see I'll take this head off and then I'll show you just to see if you're paying attention, tea or coffee, please add comments below. Which one do you prefer? This video is starting off very basic and I'm sorry if I'm um, teaching some people to suck eggs, really. Um, but I wanted to start at the beginning, explain how it works so people can understand it. And then from that, we'll work up to showing the rest of the system. So this might be a fairly long video, but I will try my best to um, to add as much in it as I can. To take off this Synchron motor, we've just got a couple of screws in here. It's a bit hard to show on camera there, but we've got one there, and then we've got one down here. And what I was saying about this is normally closed, what that means is the flow of water that can go through here if the pump was pumping to this valve and there was no power to it it wasn't calling for heat this would be closed if for instance you've got a problem with your heating and you wanted to manually override it then that's what the manual slider is for there and then you just manually override that so what I'll do now is I'll just take the synchron motor off and I'll show you how that works so I've just removed the screws. There's actually three screws. There's two that hold the motor in, and then there's one there that just holds the earth in there. And then this well here will just pull out there. And if you have a look there, very, very simple how this works. It's just got a little cog there. And we'll zoom into that and I'll show you that a bit in a bit more detail. So this is known as a two-part valve which that's because it's got two parts there and what happens is you've got some cog you've got a like a motor there like a gearing if you have a look there and what often happens with these just for fault finding just a little tip these um, little like step bits here they wear off over time and what happens is that motor there as it turns it moves that valve there, uh, I'll just snap that off, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, but what it does is it just moves this motor there, and that's what it does as it turns. What we'll do now is I'll just wire this motor up so you can see what happens. If you have a look at the motor here, you've got your brown and you've got your blue. So, what that means is when you get power down this brown it moves this motor and the blue is just the neutral 
So what we'll do, we'll do that now. We'll do that with a temporary connection. So I've just put a temporary connection on there. And I've just plugged it in to the mains here. So I'm just going to switch this on. And what that's telling us, that would be, if you've turned your time clock on, and if you've turned your room start up or your cylinder start, then that switched live there would then get power and it would turn this motor. So we'll do that now. So if I just switch that on, and then I don't know if you can see this, but if you can see the motor there is now turning. And what that would do, as I've said already, is it would move this gear in, in here, and then that would open this valve inside. So you've got your power onto your motor, your motor's moved this cog here and then inside here you've got a little micro switch in there and then normally you'd have your grey and your orange so I'll take this micro switch out and I'll just show you how this works if it comes out so I've got my multimeter here I'm just going to put it onto the bleep setting and then I'm just going to show you how this micro switch works. So as I've said already, you've put power on, you've asked it to, you've called for heat, your motor's moved, it clicks on this micro switch here. And what that does then is whatever you've got on your grey, the micro switch presses and it'll put it down the orange. So I'll just try and I'll try and show you this. It's a little bit a little bit awkward I could do with another hand so if you see there I've just got it connected press the micro switch and you can see that when you press the micro switch that then gives you continuity through there and there which means whatever you've got on this grey you'll have coming out on the orange so normally we'd have 230 240 volts on this grey wire and then what we'd do, the micro switch would be pressed and it would send it down the orange and the orange would go to normally to the boiler. It may be that it feeds the pump as well, depending on the type of system. And then once you've done that, so now no, we've no longer got a call for heat. What happens then, this zone valve here, because it's got this spring inside, it's spring loaded and what that spring does is that spring will pull the valve back closed so all that all this motor does this motor opens the valve so it opens it opens the two pot valve so it moves the ball that's in there and it opens this two pot valve and then when you turn the power off to it so you no longer got a call for heat the spring will then pull the ball back and then it will be closed again. Just so I can judge how long to do these videos, if you're still watching, click zone valve or comment below zone valve and then I know that you've, you know, you're interested. And um, so now what we'll do, we'll have a look at the valve, we'll have a look internally in the valve and then we'll move on to the board and we'll have a look at the S plan design of it so this this just clicks off on this one and it reveals this section here what i'll do is i'll just undo these nuts and i'll show you the ball inside there don't forget if you're still watching please comment below comment zone valve and then i know how far you've got in this video so and also please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell as well that's really important for me to be able to do more content for you uh, when we look inside this this zone valve or this um, two-part valve some people call it as well we take the plate off and it's got it's got a little thing in there it's a bit you just see there it's got a little paddle in this one in the um, in a wide plan valve in a, a free part valve they normally have a ball inside and then if we have a look in there if we have a look in that valve we can see there's a flat 
it's a bit awkward to see but there's a flat area there and what happens is as that closes that stops then the flow of water through the valve you do need to make sure as well to put these valves on the right way around because sometimes they can bang and clang as well if they're not right way around also if you have a look in there it's got a little o-ring so if you ever have a valve that's leaking from top of here then you'll know why it'll be that o-ring in there that's leaking so that's inside the valve what we'll do now we'll have a look at s plans and we'll have a look at multiple systems so zones um yeah so let's have a look and then what, what we'll do as well is i'll take this wiring center off and we'll have a look at the wires inside as well so you can have a look at see what a wiring center looks like inside so with a two port zone valve the most common type of system you're going to find would be an s plan also you would find an s plan s plan plus which is just extra zone valves so what we'll do now is I'll zoom into this, turn the power on, and I'll show you how an S plan works. So how does an S plan system work? So first of all, we need a call for heat. So now the timer is on. So that's asking the boiler to come on on a timer setting. But then we need to go to the thermostat and we need to turn the thermostat up as we turn the thermostat up once this gets higher than what the temperature is in this room it will then call for heat and it will turn this valve on so we can see there the lights come on we can see on there and then this valve here will move and then that boiler turns on there and that can be the, that would be the same for multiple zones so this could be a room thermostat that's controlling it and it could also be a cylinder cylinder thermostat which is what this one is here so again with the cylinder side if we turn that on we're asking the hot water to come on or or a zone it could be a zone and then what we'd need to do again we need to turn it up on here if it was hot water then obviously we'd be turning this up to 60 degrees or somewhere around that and then again this will come on you can just see there these valves are really good these EPH valves EPH zone valves because it shows you and again it's showing you the boiler has come on so that's how the s plan would work and if you've got more zones so you could have you might have a different type of control you could have a free channel clock and then you could have free zone valves if you wanted and you could also have programmable stats or programmable thermostats and you could have as many um, zone valves as you want then as many two part valves as you want on the system what I'll do now we'll take I'll take this off on here and we'll have a look inside at the wiring center you need to be very careful if you're going to work on electricity electricity could be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing so I'd always advise that you go on some sort of training course and make sure that you're competent to work with electrics I'm going to remove this cover now so I've just undone, undone the two screws out front of it and then we've got us wiring center in here at the moment the zones are all off and we can have a look how how this is wired now so if we have a look at us multimeter we turn it onto volts and we get us probes if we go on to the earth wire and the blue wire so the blue wire is the neutral we can see there normally that'd be less than 15 and then if we go to the brown We've got 241 volts on the brown so if we can see there that means that the orange on this one bearing in mind it's all turned off at the moment so the orange on this has been made as a permanent live and then if we go to the next one at the moment there's there's 
no volts on that one. There's none on the black. And there's very little on the on the end one here, on the greys. So going back to this micro switch, when we click this micro switch, so the zone valve opens. So this zone valve opens, it'll click the micro switch. And then what we'd expect on this grey wire, we'd expect this then to go to whatever voltage we had on the orange. Now you need to be careful um, and, and use a multimeter because sometimes the grey has been wired as a permanent live and the orange is the switched and that's how I've always done it to be honest. And But sometimes it's the other way around. So sometimes people put the orange as the permanent live and then they use the grey as the switch. It doesn't really matter because that, that is literally just a switch as, as you press that it just loops and sends voltage through. So what we'll do now, we'll put one of the zones on. Turn it up. And we can see that zone valve there has now come, come on. And we can see the boilers come on. So now what we would expect is, on this grey wire now, we will have 240 volts. So if we put it back to us earth, and we can see we've got 241 volts, which will be the same as what we've got on this orange because the micro switch inside that valve there has pushed and it's linking the power through. And then if we have a look on here, we can see the one on the left has now got 241 volts as well. So that's coming from, from this. So that's a little bit of an insight of how a two-part valve works or a zone valve works. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And please like the video, please subscribe and please ring the bell. And if you want to click up here somewhere, there'll be a subscribe button and there'll be some other videos dotted about around here as well. And happy new year.